If you got your brain scanned today, what would it reveal about you? What would it say? The other day I got an invitation to a windowless office building in downtown Manhattan to get a quantitative electroencephalogram, which is designed to measure brainwave patterns as electrical signals. It is being increasingly used to analyze various aspects of brain function, including things like cognitive flexibility, intelligence, and even creativity. Then I'll be jumping on a call with the neuroscientist Andrew Hill, who has a PhD in cognitive neuroscience from UCLA. He is going to analyze my brain and the results honestly shocked me. Peak. Brain Institute. Hello. Oh, hi. You must be Monica. Yes. Nice to meet you. Are you here for the brain scan? Yes. <laughs> okay, so just tell me what to do. So I put this on. So the first step was a 15 minute test designed to measure my stamina, attention, and focus, involving responding to a series of changing numbers, both visual and audio. That was exhausting. I really got in the zone with that test. I was like, clicking the numbers. Then it was time to get wired up for the brain scan. This isn't gonna hurt, is it? I'm like so nervous right now. <laughs> you want me to hold it here? Yes. Okay. Do a lot of people do this? Yes. Like people come here all the time like being like, hey, I'm gonna get my brain mapped today. Yes. So this cap is gonna like detect my brain waves? So it contains a series of electrodes that measure the strength of brain waves in different areas of the brain and also connectivity among different regions of the brain. So like you could tell whether somebody's like smart or not? It's actually a little more complicated than that, but there is a bunch of research that actually says it does. Oh, I'm so nervous. I feel like this is gonna really reveal <laughs> My true nature. <laughs> Xiaoma exposed <laughs> by brain scan is the title of this video. But like what kind of people would like want to do this? Well, I guess I'm doing it, so. Maybe a lot of finance people. Athletes, maybe? I literally felt like I was in the Matrix as Monica hooked my brain up to a machine that would beam my brainwave data straight to her laptop. So this is gonna be able to tell how many languages I actually speak. <laughs> I'm gonna answer that question once and for all. <laughs> if everybody's always wanted to know how many languages do you really speak, this is science, guys, okay? <laughs> oh, that looks like a big needle. And it is a big needle! <laughs> oh my god, I can feel it! <gasps> oh! Oh! Oh no! Oh, so it's gel. It's just like a jelly kind of feeling. Electro gel. Yeah. So it's, it's for conducting the electricity better. Yes. You know, people always ask like, Oh, you know, Shama, you must be so smart to learn all these languages. I'm like, is that really? I think it's really just more a matter of like how much time you put into it. And like so, anything. Yeah, exactly, like anything, yeah. so. The first scan is with eyes closed, so your brain waves aren't disturbed by too much visual sensation. Ready? Mm-hmm. So what, what do my brain waves look like? Tired, you're tired. Tired? Yeah. Me? Yes. Really? Know. Whoa, <laughs> this is pretty crazy. <laughs> it's creepy, like you could brain read my mind. <laughs> Tell me all my secrets. For the next portion, I had to keep my eyes open, but to minimize movement, I had to literally stare at a bottle of hand sanitizer for five minutes without blinking. No blinking for five minutes? I mean, I want to avoid COVID as much as the next guy, but come on. Okay, we're done today. We're done? Yes. All right, great. I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what the results say. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hi, Andrew. Hi there. I thought it might be fun to look at your brain since you're always in the process of pushing your brain around and seeing what it can take. And I was curious uh, what we would see. Can I just say I'm like super nervous right now? It's like going to expose me, right? Like, shall my exposed? A little bit, a little bit. So we have two things here for you. We have your performance, which is that really fun test you did where the computer said one and two a bunch of times. Got and we have your brain, which shows how unusual your brain is. But Okay. We'll start here in the performance, which is the, the executive function, where the average score, like most age match stuff, is 100. Plus or okay. minus 15 points is the typical range. Now, attention is how well you can click successfully when that one popped up that you were supposed yeah. to hit. The response control is how well you can not click when the distractor, the two, popped up. So you're well above average for self-control, essentially. Okay. You're not reactive or impulsive. In an I have advantageous good, good self-control, yeah. Dramatic, you do, statistically. Yeah. You're, you're way above average. Okay. Um, the auditory system is actually much higher than that. One and a half standard deviations, better than average. And the bars, which I'll explain in a minute, the subscales are pretty flat, pretty level. So yeah. you're very efficient. You can use this extremely high powered auditory performance the yeah. same no matter how you're feeling. If you're stressed or tired or hungry or angry, it won't matter so much. You can still stick with it in a really interesting way and not become reactive or distractible or miss stuff that you know in conversations it's a it's a bit of a superpower wow. interesting so, whatever the opposite of adhd is you have that for auditory system processing like so dramatically cool. you're one and a half standard deviations above average this was right. 440 trials of attention performance by the way great you're typical for visual typical. But you're, but most of that's because you have good stamina with it you're, you're managing it pretty well 
but you're so I'm just kind of like soft. brute forcing. I'm not a little really bit. like I, exactly. That's, special I, there. I use that term sometimes yeah, for good right. stamina. Yeah. You can tell that your visual system isn't able to be as careful or as prudent. It can't be as selective. So it gets a bit right. more like squirrel, you know, and your auditory does not. Now cool. on this cool. side, how well you can activate, this is the get, this is the gas pedal, the spotlight, the grabbing stuff. When the one came up, how well you can click. Your speed's a bit slow. My Shifting attention isn't moment. so great, mm. but I can maintain focus on something boring. You should be better at being alert than being bored. Oh, so you think there's something like holding me back? Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so I think we're seeing bottlenecks here. And actually I've seen your brain. I, I have a sense of which they are. You're really tired. So my conclusion from the intelligence test results is that my brain really isn't that special. I'm just good at focusing on boring stuff. But let's see if that changes with the brain scan results. My hunch is that you have bilateral language, both hemispheres, which is unusual for a man. Maybe it's a combination of early in life, or maybe you just developed it because you love language, or maybe language did this to you. You know? What does is, what is bilateral language mean? The language in each hemisphere. Most humans have mostly language production in left hemisphere in terms of the words we use. The average person, average human, a man, boy, who is older than about 11, can't learn a new phoneme, can't hear a new sound. Mm. The brain's pruned away phonemes that were not present in languages earlier in life. That's why you can, you can inoculate a kid by having them listen to 100 hours of TV show you know, with subtitles. Don't, don't learn Mandarin or don't learn you know, Farsi or whatever, but just have them watch the cartoon or the kids' TV show for a few seasons and you'll inoculate them against losing the phonemes later in life, right. yep. which keeps them speaking like a native person in some ways. I mean, if, if, I had to, if I had to kind of like, you know, rank order the things that I, that I have, you know, natural talent in, yeah. probably an ability to imitate accents and speech patterns would be on the top of the list. Yeah, that's, that's, just, that's just, uh, the, the non-verbal aspects of language, the prosody, the yeah. tonality, yep. the lilt, the rhythm comes from the opposite side of the brain. The analog to Wernicke's area on the right-hand side is where that comes from. Your wiring between hemispheres, the way these two areas work on the back are probably a little different than average, um, just based on how you work with language. Because you shouldn't be able to absorb new uh, accents in, with phonemes the way you do. This is your brain, and it's the, the frequencies of your brain waves, and this is the bell curve for the amounts of brain waves. Let's assume about one plus or minus is typically weird. Good job, be weird. And outside that range, things may get in the way. They don't necessarily, but let's use that as our threshold. A lot of what I uh, noticed looking at your brain was really two features, maybe three. Um, one is there's lots of slow brain waves in the back of the head here. Now the eyes are closed. So if you open the eyes, oh, you actually wake it up in the back of the head, mostly, but not completely. This may be why the visual system has those slight uh, consistency and stamina, because it's a bit tired. Your eyes are open here, EO. The back uh -huh. of the brain, the visual system's a little tired. So the consequence probably of something else is making you not be as rested. But even eyes open, we see these midline structures. The front midline, the back midline are making little extra alpha waves. They're struggling to make beta waves. These particular circuits are involved at the overlap of attention and stress in some ways. So if you're driving your car and you get distracted for a second, the posterior cingulate kicks into gear and goes, ah, watch the road. If your brain learns the world is not especially predictable or sometimes safe, it'll cramp up that evaluator a little bit in the back. And people often experience some rumination from this. So I would hypothesize, my, my first guess for you that might be significant, I would guess that you chew on stuff in your mind and it's hard to put things down. 100%. Sound plausible? Okay. Yeah, 100%. So there it is. You see here this light blue suggests you're a little fatigued actually. Um, your eyes are open here as well. Your brain's like, oh, give me a minute, man. A little tired sometimes, you know? Yeah. And this is not mm -hmm. how you're feeling the night before. This is like weeks and, you know, it's a trait, not a state essentially. Right. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm tired all the time. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad we're seeing it because we get a sense of how it works. We also get some connectivity patterns down here for the linked ears page. So I'm seeing a lot of beta information connectivity called coherence. So it's talking to itself. Scaling on the lines is line thickness. So you can see, for instance, about three standard deviations above average is this thick line. So some places where your beta waves are kind of locked together a little bit, front midline and then back behind the right ear, they're kind of talking to each other a lot more than is typical. We also see that there's this, I want to talk about this for a second, this connectivity stuff. Um, so beta is activated. I mentioned the back midline is a visceral kind of chewing on things. The front midline appears to be activated as well. Um, when that one gets stuck, people get things stuck in their head. I would guess you have songs playing in your head, you bite your nail, something obsessive. 
Yeah. Um, this mm -hmm. also might represent a mild tick or something. I have a hunch that a tiny bit of a blink tick is showing up represented by um, like when you get stressed uh, or maybe a stutter or something. You know, it's that kind of mild little little timing thing showing up is my guess here. Or maybe you're actually a little bit obsessive. I don't know. Maybe it's bigger than I think. Uh, but that I, seems to be a thing. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I don't have any ticks, but I have the behavior that would lead to ticks. I'm, I'm, my, my, I'm extremely obsessive. Um, and when I was younger, I had, I did many things that you could characterize as OCD. Got it. We also have behind the right ear. Um, there's a big structure there called the TPJ. Some people that have a hot right TPJ will often have a few features that go along with it. And the first is, I bet you're a little bit of a princess in the pea with sensory information. I bet you can't ignore anything in the environment. Oh Everything gosh. gets in. That's so true. That's so true. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm like an incredibly light sleeper, like the slightest thing. Oh. Yeah. But this is also like you hate your friends chewing around you and you notice like the dog barking oh, yeah. 17 houses away. And, oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Um, let's see what else we can see here. Is this, kind of, this is kind of creepy, right? I can see it's some creepy. of this stuff. This is weird. Yeah. All right. Let's go to here, which is how fast your brain is. Um, we don't know how fast your brain is because you're so tired, you're running at half speed. Wow. So I will be able to tell you about how your, your native speed, a bunch about your natural resources after yeah. your sleep gets sorted out. But the sleep right. stuff is clouding all the speeds here. And you're a little sluggish, running a little slow. But if this was happening in me, who's older than you, this alpha is slowing down, I'd be having word finding issues and tip of the tongue phenomena and hunting for names and words and stuff like that. I'll be talking and then all of a sudden, like if I'm not, if I'm not really paying attention, I'll just like, pause and just like forget what i was saying in the previous uh, okay. you know first half of the sentence your brain is not getting good delta good deep sleep dream less sleep you probably find you're getting 15 minutes to half an hour of deep sleep a night based on these numbers and you need more like an hour and a half minimum maybe maybe two hours for someone like you um this suggests when you're asleep your brain's actually aware of the world yeah and, and not getting good deep sleep not filling your bucket and so therefore when you're awake you're kind of half asleep. So you're too awake, you're too awake when you're asleep and asleep when you're awake based on yeah. this. Yeah, I take naps during the day because I'm just so tired. Uh, here's ratios at the end. Ratios will throw things into more great relief. And mostly you have the back midline visceral worry and the back right sensory like rawness, this is the sensory integration difficulty or the princess and the pea syndrome that I call it, where you can't ignore anything coming in from the outside world. Um, this can also produce a touch of social anxiety because social information gets loud as well. Like these spaces can get loud emotionally almost. Um, but you know, this is a gifted kind of cluster too. People who are extra sensory stuff, even unusual auditory processing stuff that comes along with a gifted kind of brain. So once you are, have better sleep, uh, deep sleep, then we will see these alpha waves come up in speed significantly. So my conclusion is that while my brain may have certain advantages that help with language processing, they're offset by massive oversensitivity that leads to poor sleep and greatly slows me down. So my brain might actually be special, but just in the wrong direction. Sounds like I need to get better sleep is the conclusion of this article. Yeah, I would recommend you get a sleep tracker of some sort, like an Aura Ring, O-U-R-A, okay. or a Whoop Strap, W-H-O-O-P. Those are probably the two good ones that will measure the heart rate variability as a way of staging sleep. But I, I, the, point, the point was not to sell you services or equipment. It was to be like, wait a minute, I bet I know what that guy's brain looks like. And I was kind yeah. of curious. And I was kind of right. I expected to see this. I thought, this is what I talked about in my message to you. I was like, oh, I wonder if you have that kind of caught in high gear. I was obliquely kind yeah. of referring to that piece of it because I thought I saw it a little bit in your mannerisms. Yeah. Um, which means that you have this high powered brain that you can tune a tiny bit and retain all of that, but not have it like drive you. So I was, you know, I was excited to show you that basically. Wow. Um, That's so interesting. Thank you.